What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today I'm going to be showing off my new favorite deck in standard format, Spear Tomb Ultra Beasts. This deck was originally piloted by Andrew Wambolt to a top 8 finish at the Limitless Online Qualifier number 4. I've made one change to the deck that I really love, and I took out the Faramosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX and replaced it with Blacephalon GX. Faramosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX can be very useful. If you use Beast Energy, you could Beast Game GX, dealing 80 damage with the Beast Energy to knock out Jirachis for two prizes, and that can help you win at the end of a very tight game. However, I found that pairing the Beast Energy with the Faramosa and Buzzwool Tag Team GX is usually pretty hard, and if you end up having to place the Beast Energy down anywhere else, or discard it using one of your many professor's research, then the Faramosa and Buzzwell is actually just mostly a liability and you don't really get to utilize it to its full potential. Now, it can also be good for its snipe attack, dealing 30 damage to the active and 30 damage to the bench, but I've found that more often, I really like the ability to just burst GX and end a game that way. I've also found myself promoting the Blacephalon GX just to use Bursting Burn, and I've also utilized Mind Blown to finish off games as well. Sometimes you create these really weird board states where you need to go up and burst GX, and then your opponent can't take a knockout on a Blacephalon, then you attach another energy and you Mind Blown something for a game. I've certainly done that too. The Blacephalon GX has been a great addition to this deck since I've been playing with it. And uh, on PTCGO on stream, we have been 24 and 2 with this deck. So 24 wins and only two losses with this deck since we started playing it. Our first 10 games or so, we used the Faramosa and Buzzwell Tag Team GX. But uh, after those first 10 games, we started playing the Blacephalon GX, and it has certainly carried us to a number of wins. Now, this deck is fast. It's aggressive, and it hits hard, and that's what I really love about it. Also, has four copies of Marnie in the deck, so we can consistently reset our opponent's hand to just four cards while we attack them with Spear Tomb. Spear Tomb is a 60 hit point Pokemon, and it has this funky ability where it puts a damage counter on itself once during your turn. Now, that makes more sense when you read the attack, Anguish Cry. It does 10 damage plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So if you have five damage counters on the Spear Tomb, you can deal base 100 and 60 damage since 5 times 3, 150, plus the 10, 160 damage for just one energy, which is pretty good. One hit KOs, uh, Dragapult V Maxes, and two hit KOs, most V Maxes, two hit KOs, most tag team GX. Now, the most busted part about the deck is the fact that we get to pair it with Hustle Belt. Now, Hustle Belt says if the Pokemon this card is attached to has 30 HP or less remaining and has any damage counters on it, its attack does 60 more damage to the defending Pokemon. So, 60 60 more damage is absolutely busted. We do base 160 with five damage counters, plus the Hustle Belt brings us to the magic number of 220, which is just enough to knock out Zashi and Vs that are not wearing metal goggles or a metal frying pan, which is why we play Tool Scrapper in the deck, because it's very important to remove those so that we can hit those magic number one hit KOs on Zashi and Vs. We also play Buzzwool in the deck. Sledgehammer, an amazing attack, does 30 damage plus 90 more damage if your opponent has exactly four prizes remaining. And since we only play one Pokemon, two Pokemon, two, two Pokemon in the deck that are worth two prizes. And for the most part, you're only gonna put them down if absolutely necessary. It's very easy to force your opponent into that sledgehammer turn. If your opponent's playing Picaron, we've got the Mew from Unbroken Bonds with the Bench Barrier ability. We can put that down, make it so that your opponent cannot tag bolt around that four prize turn. You're going to force them to go into that four, four prize turn so that you can sledgehammer. Sledgehammer absolutely carries in the Picaron matchup. We hit 220, which is close to a one hit knockout on Picaron, but not quite there, which is why we play the Shrine of Punishment to help bring those Picaroms into the one-hit KO realm, which is very valuable as well. One of the other things I really love about this list is two copies of Great Catcher in addition to the two bosses' orders. Really fantastic access to your opponent's bench with the Great Catchers. A lot of times during the early turns of the game, you're using Building Spite, you're using Rainbow Energies to put more damage counters on your Spirit Tomb, but you don't quite have a knockout on maybe what's in front of you or you would like to bring up a Dedenne GX. We have infinite access to Dedenne GX on the bench, or it seems like infinite with two copies of Great Catcher and two bosses' orders in the list. 
And then we also play the Nihilego for its Nightcap attack. Uh, you can only use this attack if your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining. Like I said, pretty easy to control what your opponent's prize count is at with this deck since you're playing all non-GX attackers. And if your opponent does go to two prizes remaining, you can Nightcap and copy one of their big GX attacks or Brave Blade. It's also great for knocking out Zashians at the end of the game. If you're playing against a Zashian deck, you can Nightcap. Your opponent has two prizes left and take your final two prizes or two key prizes on a Zashian by copying Brave Blade. So I do that all the time with the deck. And with the Beast Energy, you can Brave Blade for 260 damage with the Nihilego, even getting through Metal Goggles and Metal Frying Pan. So I love that. And then Sledgehammer with the Beast Energy actually hits for 150, which means that you can knock out a Picaram even with a Big Charm on. So the Beast Energy is very good, but we do have the Tool Scrapper to remove those annoying tools just in case we don't find the Beast Energy to be able to play around it. The Fion is exceptional in this deck. It's so good because with this deck, I've actually been choosing to go second. And the reason I've been choosing to go second is because it punishes slow starts. It just punishes slow starts, especially with Fion. A lot of times your opponent is not going to be able to find a bunch of Pokemon to put onto their bench on the first turn of the game going first. A lot of times it's just an active Jirachi and maybe a bench Dragapult or something like that. And I certainly have had games where my opponent starts Jirachi, Dragapult on the bench, put an energy on the Dragapult on the bench, and then you can go turn one, get three damage counters onto the Spear Tomb, Whirlpool suction up the Dragapult, and knock it out. It's just that aggressive of a deck. And having the option to Fion to force your opponent to bring up something on their bench, especially during those early turns of the game, is very good especially since a lot of times you're going to be using research on the first turn of the game to just draw through as much of your deck as possible at first i was a little bit suspect of the single darkness energy in the deck but with so many professors research in the deck often you will have to suboptimally discard some of your energy we play the four aurora energy the four rainbow energy the beast energy having the one darkness energy in the deck is nice because we can use Ordinary Rod to put the Darkness Energy back into the deck just in case we need it to finish off a game. And I really love it for that. And then the Tapu Fini tech in here just helps ensure that Blacephalon matchup. And the Blacephalon matchup is extremely strong. You don't need to actually play any of your GXs down in order to trade knockouts with the Blacephalon, where the Blacephalon player will more often than not have to play down that Oracorio GX to help them draw the cards they need to take knockouts every single turn. So between Spear Tomb can easily build up to 120 damage. We also have Sledgehammer Buzzwell also does 120 damage against the Blacephalons hitting the knockout there. And we have the Tapu Fini. And we can put the Tapu Fini back into the deck with Ordinary Rod. Makes that Blacephalon matchup very strong. And I think that this is just a busted deck. It is uh, everything that I want in a non-GX deck. It's fast. It trades well. It's consistent. The Acro Bikes make it very easy to turn through your deck and hit the cards you need on the turns you need them. The Jirachi engine certainly holds this deck together, and I really love that Stellar Wish engine represented in this deck. And the Disruption, uh, with Marnie every single turn, I've even been able to beat Mill decks with this deck, since you could just Marnie them every turn, and then Gust key Pokemon to take knockouts, Fion to help get around dolls as well. Uh, that's the Spirit Team decks. My new favorite deck in format. I'm going to be showing off this deck in action during some tournament gameplay that I've been playing on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online during my Twitch streams. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Tricky Gym, where I stream live Pokemon Trading Card Game content every single weekday. We've got a great community there. Definitely recommend giving the Twitch channel a follow. Also, if you're looking for TCG singles, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all of the best trading trading card game singles supporting the shop directly supports the content we create here on tricky gym if you're looking for ptcgo codes make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com for instant ptcgo code delivery enjoy the gameplay and let me know what do you think of this busted deck in the comments below now like i said i really don't mind going second with this deck i think it actually in some situations is optimal feels optimal even against decks like dragapults getting to you know, launch the first attack seems really good. Now it looks like I'm playing against Picarom here. Picarom seems like a pretty decent matchup. I think that's like one of the strong ones. We've got the Mew as well. We can stop Tag Bolt. We've got Shrine of Punishments. Steven, which deck box do I use RL, IRL? There's this old Zapdos one that I use. And I also have this Japanese... I, I really rotate. 
have this Japanese Misty one that I use sometimes, and I have an old school Zapdos one that I use. Uh, usually, I would say just pick whichever deck box you know you like. Yeah, just just look around whichever deck box you like. Uh, sometimes I just be using a basic Ultra Pro deck box. Um, I don't really get all my deck boxes are usually plastic. I will say I usually just rock with like some sort of plastic one. I've got this one here. This deck box, but I'm too afraid to use it because it's too nice. Um, that Natalie got me for Christmas one year. It's a 2006 plastic deck box. It's got Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres in it. You know, that's like vintage at this point, though. This is from 2004? It's from 2004, yeah. So that is, uh, that's vintage right there. So, you know, we rock with that sometimes, but I, I, I would not. I'm scared to play with it because I'm, you know, because it's nice. All right, no energy on the peaks turn one. You hate to see it. That's fine. I mean, Buzzwole here can do enough damage to the active. Let's uh, start off with an acro bike. Boss's orders. I don't have a switch yet. Let's just go. I don't actually mind energy on the Buzzwole turn one. That seems fine to me. And we're just going to bench this. And I think I'm just going to research and save my bench space for other things. All right. Now we do need the switch here, Jirachi. Come on. You said no. No. No switch for you. Fine. I'm not even mad. <laughs> totally fine with that. I'm not even frustrated at your... Yeah, we got to get rid of one of these rainbow energies. Go get a spear tomb. It's fine. What could possibly go wrong? Only four energy in deck looking... Oh, boy. Oh, baby. All right. We built some spite. Ominous posture. That's fine. Yeah. We'll get the we'll get the switch next turn. Let's see. I'll uh, I'll look around the studio. See, are any of my deck boxes around the studio? I do get a lot of uh, mileage out of these. You know, these like basic Ultra Pro deck boxes because you know they're just uh, yeah they just they get the job done. You feel me? No, I don't have any. Uh, a lot of times I end up using the World's deck boxes as well because the, the deck boxes they give out at the World Championships are the double deck boxes. Those are really nice. Um, but a lot of times I won't use that for like my main deck at a tournament because, uh, you know, uh, I want it to be more like a lower profile. So I definitely go for like, uh, for me though, smaller is better. Like I really like prefer a small plastic deck box. I don't want anything big, gaudy, takes up space on the tournament table. No. I want something that'll fit in my hoodie pocket. Okay? Like, will easily fit into my hoodie pocket. That's like the the goal. Yeah, Jesse says the $2 Ultra Pro deck box, all I use. Yes, I agree. Just uh, something simple. Yeah, I actually, yeah, no sleeves, rubber band, hold the cards together for sure. All right, so they got the full blitz this turn. Counter the shrine. Knock out the Jirachi. That's fine. Um, I could probably gust up and knock out. Let's see, I'm doing 220 damage maximum with the spear tomb. Do I want to gust? Yeah, I probably do want to gust because I got. Right here, if I could just get one damage counter to move, I can knock out the Zara Aura, and then we could Sledgehammer that Picaram for knockout. That seems stronger to me. Okay, we did get the other Tomb, so that's good. And we're just gonna build Spite. 
ominous posture. And then I'm gonna quick ball again and build spite again. If I have another tomb, I should have another tomb in the deck, yeah. Let's quick ball again here. Get another one. It's fine. Go here. Build spite again. So that way I have like a head start. Cause I'm like running out of rainbow energies. Oh, I could have done. Yeah, I could have done the 220. That's fine. We'll build spite. I wasted a damage counter. That's my bad, chat. I wasted. I forgot I was. I did waste a damage counter there. Wasted one. Okay. So then. If they. They're in like a bad spot at this point. Because Spirit Tomb's doing 220 damage here. You know, obviously Sledgehammer here. They have no way to like play around that. So we've put them in a bad spot pretty much no matter what they do. Which was the goal. Yeah, we're totally fine. It actually don't mind having... Uh, yeah, it does not really matter. I mean, this guy... I uh, would like to hit the Shrine, I think. You know, would be pretty good for us. But I am very low on energy. Is the thing. So you're going to Lightning Ride GX. Try to force me into a suboptimal Sledgehammer. But that's fine. I could just win the game. Like, if I knock out this Dedenny, I could potentially win the game on that Zero Aura. So that doesn't really matter. All right, we've got Quick Ball here. Hmm. I think I'm just conservative with my energy here. Like, there's no need to really go crazy. No need to stretch. Like, we just do what we have to do. I think we can quick ball. Get ourselves maybe Nihilego. They have no way to skip ahead in prizes. So, like, the Nihilego can be very good. I think, right? And if they end up getting down to two prizes, we could do that. But I'm going to be conservative with my energy attachments here. That's fine. Sure, we'll bench that. We'll just let Chamber for knockout. That's fine. But like I said, very low on energy. So, should Fion? I don't think I need to. I'm so far ahead right now, all I have to do is continue to attack. If I just continue to attack, I should win this game. You know, we put them in a compromising situation here by having to probably attack with the Tag Team GX. If I can knock one of those out, I win. Looks like they do have bosses orders. So they can just bring up somebody else. It's fine. They want to knock out that spear team. That is like totally okay. Okay. So I'm looking at. Hmm. Trying to soften this thing up. I think this buzz will actually could be good. And I can sledgehammer for 120 damage. Yeah, and then win with Nihilego boss's orders next turn. But then if they... That's fine. I'm fine with this. Yeah, because then if they, if they like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to knock out the buzz wall. That's fine. I'm pretty sure I just sledgehammer here. Hmm. 
No, the big fear is Mallow and Lana. That's like the big, big fear here. Also, keep in mind, I'm like almost out of energy chat, which is why I'm being very conservative with the researches. And also, I just have theoretical win in hand next turn. So like. Yeah, and we win. All right, GG's. So now they're down to their two prizes. We got the Nihilago, and we just nightcap their Tag Bolt GX for game. That's GG's. Yeah, Nihilago is any attack. So I could have theoretically gusted up the Zara Aura. I mean, that's why that's why the uh, that's why this play was correct because no matter what, they were gonna have to go to the two prize turn. So like the thought process was this: if they boss his orders up my Nihilago to prevent me from copying Tag Bolt, then they left my two energy Buzzwool, and I could have used Swing Around for game, right? So like that's why that play was correct because we had win with either Nihilago or with Swing Around on Buzzwool. I'm gonna choose to go second again. I don't know. It's kind of been. Been working out. Been getting the turn one. What it's like being a content creator? It's it's stressful because in a way it's like the most amazing thing in the world. Um, but in a, you know, and I love it absolutely. It's so much fun. It's like a dream come true, right? And I love getting to do what I love to do every day. And I love creating. And those are the parts, you know, and I love the community here. And, uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's those things that, uh, you know, really drive me. I mean, getting to interact with the community, getting to teach, share my love of the game, um, you know, grow as a person, meet more people, so on and so forth. But then there's like a lot of different stressful things that really play into it. Um, I mean, certainly... Uh, there's the drive to always be, you know, bettering myself. Um, you know, there's nobody telling me what to do every day. I, in order to improve the stream, I have to make the stream better. In order to improve my content, I have to come up with new ideas. So I'm constantly trying to innovate, constantly trying to, uh, come up with new ideas, constantly trying to, um, you know, to figure out how do I be more engaging? How do I make my content better? Right. Um, and then there's also, you know, if you are having any sort of personal stuff, right? Like if I have any sort of personal issues, baggage, mental, physical, whatever, I have to ignore it for five hours a day, right? Which is really hard um, because my job is not to... Yeah, we just have knockout on that Dreepy, right? Yeah, so we just gust up the Dreepy and knock it out. Yeah, for sure. And then we just data change. You know, so putting all of your personal stuff aside every single day is pretty tough. Um, it's something that I'm, like, getting used to. But it's definitely not the easiest thing in the world. And, you know, you have to have, like, a really strong support system to be able to kind of, you know... Because, like, when you're done with, with streaming, you have to, like, decompress, right? Um... And, uh, you know, you have to have a really strong support system to be able to support you while, you know, while you're not on camera, right? Because, and then especially it's like, one of the most stressful parts about it is that you know, like you stream for five hours, right? And that's like a lot of talking. And it's a lot of holding the floor. And it's a lot of being happy. And it's a lot of like, you know, high energy, right? It's just high energy for like five hours, high energy. Let's go, let's go, let's go, right? And then I need to do YouTube videos, right? So it's like, that is probably the hardest part is doing both YouTube and streaming because as soon as you turn the camera off for streaming, it's like, all right, we got to turn the camera back on and I'm going to need to do this take and it needs to be high energy and it needs to look good and it needs to be engaging for a new audience, right, on YouTube. And so, like, trying to figure out that balance has been really hard as well um, because it's, uh, 
yeah, it basically, it, it never stops, right? I mean, so like one of my favorite parts, I do love doing the editing. The editing is just like, the thing about editing is it takes so much focus too, right? Like, so you have, like, it's a lot of focus. So, you know, I feel like when I'm done with my days here, it's just that I have been mentally engaged for so long that my brain kind of feels like mush is kind of what it, uh, you know, what it is. Because the playing the Pokemon trading card game is extremely mentally engaging. Then uh, creating YouTube videos is mentally engaging. Then editing the videos is also mentally engaging. Because, you know, using the editing software and doing all of that, that also requires like focus and, and things like that. So it is a, it's an extremely taxing job. Um, believe it or not. I mean, if you, you're like, I know I've worked a lot of different jobs. I've been a janitor. I've been a, uh, teacher. I've been a special ed teacher. I've been a, uh, I've been a valet at one of the nicest restaurants in Baltimore. I valeted cars. Valeting cars was one of my favorite jobs that I ever had, by the way. Valeting cars was awesome. And the thing is valeting cars was hard work, but I loved being outside. That was the coolest. And I got to run between cars and it was like very meant, you know, very physically engaging, which I think was one of the most rewarding things about it. Right? It was very physically engaging. I ain't going to have it like that. Yo, Brandon, thank you so much for the bits. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for all you do supporting the channel. I really appreciate you, Brandon. All right, we're going to Marnie just to see some more cards. I know I'm like taking a ton of time here on this turn. Time that I don't really need to take, but that's fine. I'm going to get another Spear Tomb down. And I think, you know, the these guys are all weak to dark. So, so long as I just have a Spear Tomb out and can attack by the time one of these guys eventually evolves. Like, they do snipe 30 to the bench, which feels bad. So, I need to stop, probably stop using Building Spite on any of my bench guys. The Hughes, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yo, thanks, Tweed. I appreciate that. And thanks, Brandon. <laughs> Pun sesame, too funny. But thank you so much for the bits. And thank you for the continued support, guys. Yo, thank you, guys. And I'm not, you know, trying to... You know, I, I I usually don't talk about all that because I don't. It's not what the show's about, right? The show's at fun, entertaining, enter, you know, entertaining, high energy. That's that's kind of, you know. Sometimes I, you know, I like to break it down, and get real, you know, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll have some really good conversations here, and that and that really drives me too. That really does, and I love that, and I love getting to be open with you guys, and I love, you know, really, I feel like we've built a very tight community here, uh, and I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable with you all, you know, sharing a lot of that you know, uh, you know, breaking down those barriers and sharing a lot of that uh, with you guys. So I'm really thankful for that as well. So thank you guys all so much for being so, you know, uplifting, encouraging, you know, all of that. It really matters. So thank you guys so much. All right. Now they've got the Dragon Fault. They've got two energy on it. They are not ready to attack yet, though. That's fine. Uh, we can just place another energy down just swing away at this point i'm not putting any more damage counters into play because they're already going to take a double knockout with the dragapult so uh, i am going to need to probably flip a heads here eventually which is a little bit annoying uh, or i'm going to need them to flip a tails for that matter uh, i could feel and around it buy myself another turn um which would be good right and i have like the fion this next turn. So I think that that's probably good. Yo, Pokeron. Hopping in there with five gifted subs. Chat, give it up for Pokeron. Thank you so much for for the support, Pokeron. Let's go. Appreciate you, Pokeron. Thank you for the support. And thank you all for being awesome. Busted subs. You guys, you guys rock. Thank you so much for all the love today. All right, so they got the double knock out there. Appreciate you, Pokeron. Thank you so much. You're great, Pokeron. Thank you for being a part of the channel. Welcome new subs as well. 
All right, I think this turn, Fion should be in the deck, I believe. So we're going to go here, grab the Fion, and I'm just going to sledgehammer one of those other dudes, guaranteed. Go here, quick ball here. I can get another Spear Tomb, potentially. Or I can get Blacephalon GX. No, nah, we'll just get another Spear Tomb. Um, hmm. I do not want, you know, my opponents to get any, you know, free KOs. Another Spear Tomb. I'll just ditch the Feeny. All right, all right. We're going to go there. That's, that's fine. And we'll research. Okay, Great Catcher. Fossil's Orders Shrine. None of that really matters. That's fine. We can put the Jirachi down. That's fine. Whirlpool suction. Get around this thing. And then they're just going to feed us the Jirachi. That's okay. Cool. So we're going to Sledgehammer. And then, you know, we're weak to Psychic, so we do get KO'd in return, but that's fine. We've only got... We only got one damage counter on a spear tomb right now, and they only sniped three. So, you know, if they put damage counters on the spear tomb, they're just powering it up. Should be cool. Let's see, what do you guys want? Press one in the chat to make the slow bro bigger. Press two to keep them the same size. Press one if we should feed the slow bro. Press two, keep them the same size. Press three to make them smaller. <laughs> All right, Chad, ask and you shall receive. That's a lot of ones. These big, big slow <laughs> There we go. He loves eating. There he goes. Excellent. We're not even blocking anything important. Cover the whole screen. <laughs> Yo, Flab Face, thank you so much for the sub. Look how handsome he is. Appreciate it, Flab Face. Thanks so much for the support. All right, all right, all right. We've got two Dragapult now, so no more shenanigans, you said, with the Fion. Oh, and they did get the double knockout with the Zigzagoon. Ah, this is bad, Chad. I could lose. We could surely lose here. I was not expecting the Zigzagoon plays with the Scoop Up Net. I Honestly, I didn't think they had it like that. All four Scoop Up Nets are in the discard pile. Okay. I honestly did not, did not think they would have it like that. Okay. That's fine. Now that thing's fully built up as well. Okay. So I cannot give them a chance to take another double knockout. Three Spear Tombs are in the discard pile. Do I actually go for Spear Tomb this turn? I mean, all I need is to do 70 damage. No, I need to do more. So I need, I need three damage counters on the Spear Tomb in order to take a knockout. So I think, yeah, the Buzz will... Wow. I mean, I was not expecting that. I'm not going to lie. I just I just was not. All right. Um, two Pokemon. And it's got the double horror psychic energy on it. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Stellar Wish. Got Marnie and Research. That's fine. Okay, okay, okay. This is easy. All right. It's not easy, but it's like we've got it. Okay, we go here. And we get Big Daddy Blacephalon GX. And we burst GX. And then we win... the following turn with a gust. Okay. Go here. And then I only have to take one more knockout. I was hoping 
So we found another energy and a boss's orders. What about my beast energy? Is that still in the deck? Beast energy doesn't get me there on the active. Huh. Can we animate the slow bro? I do not know how to do any of that. I am sorry. <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is, a, this is as advanced as I get. <laughs> I do need to top deck energy. Yes, we are in quite a grindy spot. I was expecting, with the Bocephalon play, I was hoping that I would just draw into, like, energy boss's orders off of this. I still feel like the Bocephalon play was the best play for us. Okay. Top deck Marnie. Okay. I got rid of my third hustle belt. I would need three damage counters to get onto the spear tomb in order to have a chance at winning. The Fion does nothing. I have one rainbow energy left in the deck. Have to go for it. Okay, we did not. So I can't go up with the Blacephalon GX. If they have boss's orders, they just win. Here's our boss's orders that we wanted a long time ago. I think we just like... Hope that they don't have it. Yeah. Okay. Pass. Hopefully they don't have boss's orders or great catcher in their hand. It's unfortunate. There it goes. Do they have a way to draw it? No! We win! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> oh, geez, chat. That was way too close. GG's to Tom Body. Wow. <laughs> GG's. I can't tell you how often this Blacephalon GX has won me the game. This thing is insane for sure. We love it. <laughs> Just a little mind blown. Sure, 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 sure. Excellent. GG's Vin Bolts. And we've got a ticket. All right. The insane Blacephalon. And we're playing against Milo in the finals. Good luck to Milo. All the chips on the line here. Milo. All right, we just... Uh... So far, the Spear Tomb deck. Appreciate it. Xenos, thank you so much for the gifted sub, Xenos. I'm going to choose to go second again. I don't know. Choosing to go second has been pretty sick. Oh, yeah. Like, look at a hand like this. I'm going second every time. Come on, chat. Thank you so much, Xenos, for that gifted sub. And we're playing against Baby Blacephalon. This matchup seems really good, actually. I think I've almost completely come off of the Baby Blacephalon train, and I think I've completely converted now to, like, full-blown Spirit Tomb nerd. But yes, Spirit Tomb deck 20 and 2. 20 and 2 on stream. It's pretty filthy. Put that down. Research. Good stuff. Tomb, tomb.
Quick Ball. Feeny. Matchup seems pretty good. I don't even really need anything else. I'm just going to save the Acrobikes. Build some spite. Build some spite. Quick ball here. You know, eventually we'll probably sledgehammer. Yup. Cool. Anguish cry. And then next turn, they take the knockout with Boswell. We just go Feeny. Just need to find an energy off of my Marnie. And we just like are off to a great trade here back and forth. Cramorant, you know, a little bit annoying, but I can one hit KO a Cramorant. So, yeah, QC Hawk, we did take out the Buzzmosa just for Blacephalon GX. Blacephalon GX, I have used Blacephalon GX a number of times. It's way better than the Buzzmosa for sure. Buzzmosa, I was always mad that I could not utilize Buzzmosa without the Beast Energy. Like, it never it never got us there. Also, Blacephalon GX... Yes, Tweed, that is the only change I've made. Blacephalon GX also comes with its own set of, like, cool things it can do. I've, I've mind-blowned multiple times for game, and I have Bursting Burned, so you could do all of that stuff. Like, if you happen to play against Obstagoon, this is, like, your only out versus an Obstagoon deck is to try and Bursting Burn, right? So, and we play Rod, we can put it back in. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been really strong so far for sure. It's definitely been my favorite deck to play in this format. There we go, we get the, get the Shuffle Cam, bro. Eventually, the Snorlax V Max deck is going to need some new sleeves. I have to say, you know, starting to get a little grimy here <laughs> from me shuffling them every single day. Okay. Marnie. Yeah. I had a feeling it was going to be difficult to find the energy for, like, no reason. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Fine. It's still probably day day change. It would end up being okay. Uh, we actually went to Acrobike. There it is. Okay. Chilling. Totally fine. Stellar Wish. Grab the research for next turn. Just gonna play it a little, a little bit safer. Next turn, you feel me? All right. Rainbow Energy there. Build some spite here. Ominous Posture. Move that off the Feeny. And then go in with that. Nature Wave. I was a little bit uh, confused. I've never actually had the option to use Razor Fin <laughs> with the Tapu Fini before, so that was certainly interesting. Ionios, my sleeves would be squeaky clean if I just used JW's insane technique. You're correct. JW does have the most excellent shuffling technique if you have not already watched. Uh... Yeah, I've not already watched JW's shuffling technique video. Bigger Basta, I agree. Ominous Posture, very strange name there for the ability. You could have called it like anything else. <laughs> yes, Eternity, that's exactly my thoughts. When I went to use raise, you know, nature wave, I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what? What is that other thing?" Uh. 
shuffle cam. But yes, I think that in my testing experience, I think that uh, the Spiritomb Beast deck kind of seems to outclass the Blacephalon deck in almost every way. Uh, it's like the Blacephalon deck, but the but you have more, you know, all your guys attack for like one energy, and you can use boss's orders. Like we even beat a mill deck, chat. You know how many times Blacephalon beats a mill deck? Zero. Literally, not one time. J Car, those are real cards in that video. They're real cards, but they got destroyed in a basement flood. So, you know, they were already uh, water damaged. So then JW just decided to make a funny video out of it because that's just how JW rolls. We got both our great catchers in the discard pile already. How did that happen? Dang. All right, it's time to switch on to the bouncy ball chat. I just like the chair is really grinding my gears. Also, J Carr, did you accept my friend request? I see you in the chat. You guys like, how about that for some ASMR? It's kind of a nice sound. All right, let's go. How many kids try the water shuffle technique? Yo, what's up, Caldwell? How you doing? Thanks for joining us in the stream, Caldwell. Hope you're doing well. Having a busted day so far. Oh, okay, okay. J Carr, sorry, I didn't see that. I thought since you were I thought since you were here in the chat that uh that meant that some people will log on to PTCGO at work, J Carr, so uh, that's, that's my bad. Raise your hand if you've ever logged into PTCGO at work. Raise your hand, chat. It's okay, your boss isn't looking. Raise your hand if you've ever logged into PTCGO at work. And I'm raising my hand for before I worked as a full-time streamer. Before I, when I was a teacher, I had done it for sure. Homeroom? Psh. <laughs> what the heck do you think homeroom's for? Man. Okay. Both my shrines are down as well. It's unfortunate. I think we just can Marnie. It's fine. We're gonna switch into Jirachi. And then see how many research do I have in the discard pile? One. I'm just gonna Marnie. That's cool. Beast energy, digging it. Stellar wish. Got Marnie again for the next turn. Hustle Belt. There's no way they play Tool Scrapper. So we'll just go here, get the free knockout there. Build some spite here. And Nature Wave there. Got another three remaining. I got two bosses orders. I think both my bosses orders still left in the deck, so. Hot cup of noodles, literally currently. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we have all logged on to PTCGO at work. We have all done it, chat. A quick login to accept. <laughs> G Singh says, thanks to lockdown, I don't have to look over my, sh my shoulder anymore. <laughs> right. All right, now who got to who got to start working from home, and that meant that more PTCGO on the clock. Anybody? <laughs> just 
Work from home? You mean PTCGO from home? <laughs> With a little bit of work sprinkled in? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's up? You know, just a little bit of PTCGO while I read my emails, right? And nothing wrong with it. I'll read my emails during my opponent's turn. That's like, I mean, that's work and PTCGO at the same time. Yeah. You might as well just read, you know. I mean, during your opponent's turn. I do drawings during my opponent's turns. Reading emails, certainly easy enough during your opponent's turns. <laughs> uh, Tamiki, thank you so much for breaking down your uh, your hours for us. <laughs> That's epic. All right, 150 damage to the tap for Fini. That's fine. Now oh, we've got Sledgehammer this turn. That's cool. Start building up another one of these dudes. Save the acro bikes and stuff in the deck just to be able to gas out at the end in case I need to reach for something. But I don't really need to reach for anything right now. I'm chilling. Okay. And then I've got that bonus attachment. We just building spite there. Just ominous posture. Move that over. Got the energy. I can quick ball. It's fine. We're gonna quick ball here. Pin the deck. Get. Fion seems fine. And then I'm going to go for probably boss's orders on Oracorio next turn for game. I've only got one boss's orders in the deck, so I could pull it here off the prizes because I think I'm... Yeah, I have none down. We might find it here off Stellar Wish. Nah, that's cool. I'll grab Acrobike so we can have a little dig for it. Next turn, and we're going to just put the Darkness Energy there. Sledgehammer. And we're chilling. All right. 150 damage Sledgehammer. Seems good. There's the boss's orders. Seems good. Franchise says, I just bring the tablet to work and use the hotspot on my cell phone to get some service and play what I can. Yo, what's up, JR? How you doing? <laughs> Dart says, you know how hard it is to edit films only during your opponent's turns? <laughs> Very hard. Uh, yes, uh, I would imagine. <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. Yes, the video editing is like one of the most taxing parts about doing the whole YouTube thing. You, especially, you just have to be engaged uh you know the whole time because there's no like and you have to stay very focused because you know you're dealing with just seconds of video and it has to be precise and you know all of that there's really no playing yourself out of uh having to focus to video at video edit it i can't even listen to music and video edit you can't because you need to listen to the audio so it's like you really you can't do Video editing is one of those things that I cannot do anything else while I'm doing it. There's no multitasking happening at all. Yo, JR is seventh on the leaderboard. Yo, what's up, JR? Congrats. That's awesome. Major, major congrats, JR. All right, we should just be chilling here. Blacephalon, no way to disrupt the hand. Got boss's orders on that Oracorio. It's going to be GG's. This thing's weak to dark, right? Yep. Goodbye. GG's Milo. All right, chat, Spear Tomb. Looking sick. 
All right, let's go, chat.